Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're gonna look at a topic I've kind of danced around in previous videos and alluded to, but never really talked about in depth, and that's building armor. I'll be focusing mainly on how it interacts with units' attack bonuses against buildings, and how masonry and architecture play into that. You might assume that for a unit with bonus damage against buildings, you just add that to the attack and you'll get the final damage, or that increasing a building's armor, say with masonry, would reduce all attacks against it by that amount. Sometimes it is like that, but of course this is Age of Empires too, so it's never going to be that simple. Part of the reason it feels like it should be straightforward is that for units it really is pretty simple. You have melee and pierce armor, which is just subtracted from enemy attacks. If the armor completely negates the attack, then it does just a minimum of 1 damage. It would make sense buildings are the same, but looking at the tech tree description for masonry, you can see there's definitely more going on. Sure, it talks about pierce armor, but also normal armor, and a special building armor, with no mention of melee armor at all. The armor value for buildings isn't mentioned anywhere in the descriptions or tech tree either. So before we can get into how masonry and architecture upgrade your building's armor, let's start out by looking at what armor buildings have before those upgrades. It turns out it depends on the building and what age you're in. What age are you in? To start with, many buildings in Dark Age take the full damage that you would expect. Houses and barracks, for example, have no sign of any armor in Dark Age at all. And this is true of most of the basic economic and military production buildings as well. The town center is a bit stronger and starts with some melee armor, and defensive buildings also tend to start with quite a bit more. For lots of weak units, that armor is going to be enough to completely overpower their attack and reduce them to the minimum of 1 damage. As you advance through the ages though, across the board those wooden buildings tend to gain one extra armor each age, while stone fortifications tend to keep their original value. The idea of buildings getting stronger every age isn't limited to armor though, it's also reflected in HP. For stone walls they go from 900 HP in Feudal Age to 1800 HP in Castle Age, which is a particularly large jump made for balance reasons, and for many other buildings like houses and lumber camps, the increase is staggered across the game and a bit more modest. An easy way to know which buildings are getting extra armor and HP is to see if they change in appearance each time you advance. It's not a perfect indicator like in the case of stone walls, but buildings that stay the same in appearance over time, like farms, castles, and towers, don't have an HP increase with each new age. Of course, as units are upgraded, they also sometimes get extra attack bonuses against buildings. The first test was done with Militia, which have no attack bonus, but doing it again with Champions shows they have 4 attack bonus against buildings. It looks pretty simple in that it just adds 4 to the unit's attack when doing the calculation. If you have Arson, it adds another 2 to that number, and so on. That type of damage is different from getting upgrades at the Blacksmith though, because it's bonus damage, meaning it isn't stopped by melee armor, and is actually the minimum damage the unit can do to buildings now. Again, this is just how it works for melee units though. Buildings also have a separate pierce armor, so let's test how that compares. Here I have some longbowmen set up with 100 attack, so we can see how their expected damage compares to the actual damage and reverse engineer the pierce armor for each building. I have to bump up their attack since against some buildings they'll end up just doing the minimum of 1. For the outpost, again we can see there's no pierce armor in dark age, or actually any age. That's a bit unusual for a building, and is why I often use it in the scenario editor for different types of testing. It keeps the numbers pretty straightforward. For the other buildings though, you can see instead of starting at 0 armor, like against melee units, they actually start somewhere around 5 or 7. That again increases by 1 every age for lots of different buildings, in a similar way to melee armor. The stone fortifications again start at a higher baseline, but stay constant as you advance through the ages. The main takeaway is that the mechanic of pierce armor for buildings is similar to melee armor, but the buildings start with a higher value, giving them some extra hidden resistance to arrows. Of course, there are a couple of special exceptions. The mine crossbow line with obsidian arrows do 6 bonus damage to buildings. Even better, because it's bonus damage, that 6 is of course the new minimum damage they'll do to wooden buildings and castles, where the crossbow line often would just do 1. 
As a side effect, which I'm not sure is actually intended, they also do a minimum of 12 damage to stone walls, gates, and towers, which isn't advertised in the game descriptions. It's a similar thing with the Saracen team's foot archers, which deal two bonus damage against buildings. In many cases, that means doing a minimum of two damage as opposed to one. Now you might think it should actually be three damage since their regular pierce damage does the minimum of one, and now we're adding two more as bonus but the one damage rule is applied at the very end if the damage you would be doing is less than one. From the game's perspective, the pierce damage is negated by most buildings' armor, which leaves only the two bonus damage to be considered, which the game sees no reason to round up. The last major class of damage to consider when looking at building armor is that done by siege units. As a group, they do the most bonus damage. Battering rams, for example, start with two melee attack, but add an extra 125 bonus damage versus buildings. Regular building melee armor applies to that basic attack value and negates it, but the bonus damage that the mangonels and rams have afterward goes right through most buildings. A few defensive buildings are an exception though, and seem to have a bit of extra resistance specifically against that anti-building attack. It's not a lot, but it makes them last longer than you'd expect against only mildly anti-building units like scorpions, mangonels, elephants, tarkins, or villagers. But that still doesn't explain exactly what all those original types of armor were. Even worse, inconsistencies are starting to creep in, like how a ram's anti-building bonus damage is being reduced by walls, whereas the champion's bonus damage isn't reduced at all. It's almost like there's multiple types of bonus damage against buildings, and particular buildings can be resistant to one type or the other. To properly explain those categories and sort out the inconsistencies, I think we need to actually go to the game files. Here in the advanced genie editor, we can easily confirm a few things that were obvious from the testing. To use the barracks as an example, you can see it's not one, but four different buildings for each civilization. And as you advance, it replaces your earlier barracks with a new one, potentially with a different picture and with a stronger set of stats. The melee and pierce armor are there with an increase of one for each level you go up. And the pierce armor is a bit higher to start with. You can also see the barracks has not two, but four types of armor, including standard building, all building and melee and pierce armor. Each one has a class number associated with it. Switching to the battering ram, we can see it doesn't deal one, but actually three types of damage. 125 damage to anything with class 11 all building armor, two melee damage and 40 damage against siege. When the unit is attacked by the ram, for all intents and purposes, it's being hit with three different attacks, but if it doesn't have the right type of armor, it just ignores it. A villager, for example, doesn't have class 11 all building armor, so it doesn't take that 125 damage. But it does have melee armor, even if it's set at zero, so it will take that two damage. The main thing I wanna look at in here though is the odd behavior of these stone fortifications. Switching to the castle, we can see it has five types of armor. The first one is castle armor, which is a bit obscure and only Petards and Tarkins have a bonus against that. And then it has its two regular building armors and standard melee and pierce armor. The one I find the most crazy though is the stone and fortified walls. They have not just the two regular building armors and melee and pierce armor, but two extra ones, stone defenses and walls and gate armor. Like the castle, the only units that do bonus to walls and gates are Petards and Tarkins, but the stone defenses is the one that's really interesting for me. Towers also have it as well, but for some reason, castles don't. Now this is one of the armors that Obsidian Arrows works on. Basically, Obsidian Arrows adds six bonus damage to all buildings, as you'd expect, but also another six against stone fortifications, explaining why they break through walls and gates so quickly. Essentially, they're taking twice as much damage as they should be. The reason walls are extra resistant to some of the units I pointed out earlier is also revealed in that they have 24 extra class 11 building armor. That's the class of damage done by anti-building units, like rams, but not the anti-building damage done by champions, which is separate. If you're getting lost in all of the classes and types, the takeaway is that not all anti-building bonus damage is equal. And by giving different buildings so many types of armor, the developers can make them selectively resistant to siege without interfering with techs like arson. It also lets technology specifically affect fortifications without affecting other buildings. 
So now that we have a sense of how building armor works in general, we're finally ready to address the question of what masonry and architecture do on a reasonably technical level. To start with masonry, first of all, for all buildings in class 3 and 52, it adds 10% to the building's HP. It also raises melee and pierce armor by 1, and that building armor it's raising by 3 is class 11 armor. Now the class 3 and 52 buildings it's affecting are basically everything except for walls, which are class 27. If you double check, walls are indeed not affected by masonry. The class 11 armor that's being raised by 3 is the anti-building damage done by lots of units, including rams, onagers, trebuchets, elephants, tarkins, ships, scorpions, ballista elephants, petards, villagers with and without sappers, Indian team camels, and Burmese cavalry. That's a good chunk of units, and you're reducing damage from all of those by 3. But you might notice it completely leaves out infantry. The Swordsman Line, War Wagon, Saracen Foot, and Cavalry Archers, and all of the various infantry unique units that do bonus damage to buildings aren't affected, since they use Class 21 bonus damage, which is the second type of building armor that walls aren't naturally protected against. The technologies for Arson and Obsidian Arrows are also Class 21, meaning Masonry isn't negating that bonus damage either. You can have fully upgraded buildings right up to architecture with an extra 6 building armor, and champions are still going to do their normal 4 bonus damage against your buildings. Even worse, obsidian arrows are still doing 16 damage per shot to your gates. In fact, if the damage is unique to a particular technology or civilization, then in most cases it's not prevented by masonry. Switching to architecture, it's actually the exact same in its effect, just at a higher cost, but is less effective in a few specific cases. First of all, like masonry, it won't protect against any infantry units with anti-building attack, but it also does nothing to protect against the Burmese cavalry unique tech above what masonry already does, since the Burmese unique tech giving plus 6 damage is actually split as plus 3 to both types of armor. The first plus 3 is already negated by masonry, so architecture doesn't help negate any more damage. Of course, both techs are still giving your buildings more HP, which is arguably enough reason to get those techs anyway, even without the armor factored in at all. But that all leads to a very obvious question here. Are the Byzantines getting ripped off by having a bonus for more building HP, but not having access to masonry and architecture? I'd say they actually come out just fine. Not only is it free for Byzantines to have that extra HP, but their 40% more HP ends up giving you about the same results on a castle as masonry, architecture, and hoardings. It's also staggered starting in Dark Age, so you're getting the benefit earlier as well. Against weak units, you might think the extra armor of masonry and architecture have a larger effect, but of course, as we've seen, most buildings already have a bit of armor to begin with, and those building upgrades only add one extra melee armor to protect against most cavalry and infantry. Again, the Byzantines 40% more HP makes them comparable, if not slightly more resilient against those types of units as well. If you look hard enough, you can find some examples of units that do just the right amount of class 11 bonus damage, so that masonry and architecture are better than the Byzantines bonus, but even then it's a relatively small difference and costs a lot of resources and research time to get to that point. Again, Byzantines are getting this for free. It's a good bonus. So that's building armor and how it ties in with the building upgrade technologies. They would be worth getting in a lot of cases just for the sake of the extra HP, but now you know what's going on behind the scenes with their armor as well. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.